I listened to 30 albums in 30 days. One week in, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. I am. Five albums behind. <laughs> and this is a video documenting it. I started making music commentary content in 2022 with one goal in mind, to listen to a bunch of artists that I wasn't too familiar with, spanning across all sorts of genres to try and figure out what the hype was, as you can see by my very diverse selection of thumbnails. But 18 months in, my channel is pretty clearly skewed in one direction, no pun intended, but yeah, it's pop music. No matter how much my friends make fun of me, about it. I'm always gonna love pop music. I think it embodies what I love most about music, which is just having fun with it. But I think it'd be pretty ignorant of me to assume that there's nothing from any other genres that I would enjoy. In fact, every time I've tried covering different genres on this channel, I've loved it. So the goal for this challenge, first and foremost, is to just branch out. I want to listen to 30 albums that I've never heard before, or if I have listened to them before, I just don't remember anything about them. And I want them to be from artists that I don't particularly like. And hopefully by the end of this challenge, I will have successfully brought in my music palette. I also forgot to mention this, but I made a YouTube short series coinciding with the challenge, making little reviews for every album I listen to every day. So yeah, basically just adding on to my workload. One disclaimer, I don't plan on going too far off the deep end with any particular genre, because I really want to treat this as a chance to try a bunch of different genres rather than listening to say 30 rock albums. You know what I mean? I also do want to try and be a little more strategic with the albums that I pick so that they aren't too out of my comfort zone that I just don't understand them. Try to stick with good gateway albums, you know, dip my toes into it. Another disclaimer, Disclaimer, if you're seeing this video, that probably means that I successfully completed the challenge, not to spoil it, but clap it up for me. I know relative to the Mr. Beast fucking I spent a week naked in the Arctic type videos, this challenge won't be that hard to do. But shoot, I'm not expecting it to be easy. Finding the time to listen to an album a day is hard enough, but listening to an album, writing a review, filming the review, editing the review, exporting the review, uploading the review, every day for a month, it's gonna be a lot. So please like this video if you enjoy it, and subscribe, it would help out the channel so much. Let's get listening, losers. Day one, please don't pay attention to how messy my room is. To start off the challenge, I will be going to the gym, get a little workout in, and listening to camp by Childish Gambino. Never listened to this album before. The only song I know off of it is Bonfire, obviously. Okay, 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 it's Childish Gambino. Homegirl drop it like the Nasdaq. Step one, get changed. Whoa. Now step two is the hard part, motivating myself to go to the gym. But hopefully doing this challenge of like forcing myself to listen to an album every single day for a month will keep me more consistent. It might also just add to the load of work I feel when I go to the gym, but I guess we'll see what happens. Good morning, gentlemen. Today is day two of the 30 days and thir fuck, 30 albums and 30 days challenge. We are gonna listen to, what's the next one? Because the internet, which is the one that's like the pink one where he's like this, you know? I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm pretty sure I've listened to it before, but I literally don't remember anything about it. I only know sweatpants. That's literally it. And I'm pretty sure that's also done with 3005. But my point is, I think that counts as not having listened to the album before. I have no opinions on it at all. So we're going to count it for the video. And yeah, I don't know if I'm going to end up vlogging every single day. Maybe I'll try to film another montage at the gym. I don't know. We're just winging it here, people. I, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. This is a new kind of video for me. I took a walk with the palm tree. All right, all right, all right. One week in to the 30 days and 30, fuck, I keep fucking that up. 30 albums and 30 days challenge. We're gonna do a little tier list that will update every week with the albums we listen to that week, just so it's a little more fresher in my head. I thought about doing it just like once at the end, but then I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna remember my opinions on the albums I listened to in the first week, you know, like four weeks from now or whatever. So I'm gonna start with day one, we listened to Camp by Childish Gambino. I thought this album was pretty fun. As far as like his first real studio project, I thought there's a lot of potential that he showed as an artist. He's now shown that he lived up to that potential, but this album was fun. I liked it. I'd probably put it in... I'm feeling like here, either top of B or bottom of A. I'm anticipating listening to a lot of good albums for this video, so I want to put it at the top of B for right now. Because the internet definitely liked it more than Camp, I think it was much more ambitious. Really trying to just not repeat what I said in my, my daily shorts videos. I don't think it was as mind-blowing as I had hoped it would be, or as it felt like Gambino wanted it to be. But song for song, it was really fun. You know, great production. You can't really complain. I'm putting an A. Awaken my love. I'll say right now, out of all the Gambino albums I listened to for this video, which, I mean, I guess is kind of basically all of them. This one is my favorite. It's gonna be an S. Although that even feels pretty high because like an S tier album is like S, there's like a 10, right? And it's not a 10. All right, you know what? For now, we're gonna put 
it like that. Yeah, that feels that feels okay. Day four, we took a little break from Childish Gambino. Nostalgia Ultra, fantastic project. One of the best projects I've listened to in the past forever. Low key, it's a 10. I gave it a 9.5 in my short, but low key, it's a 10. That's an S tier. My favorite Frank Ocean project. No one will change my mind on that. Sue me, man. I like it more. Day five. This is not just a white square. As you can see, it says Donald Glover presents. And I would say the album art more or less represents this album for me. It's, it's a B. It, low key, it's a C. I might put it in C. Kind of boring, bro. There's a vision, but I just don't feel like it was fleshed out that well. Venice by Anderson Pack. I like this album. I thought it was good. Again, as a, a debut album, not many expectations to live up to there. I've heard that Malibu is a lot better. I would say this is a B. Would I put it below camp? Probably, but still fun. Now, moving on to the last album of the first week, The First Love. This shit was mid as hell, but it actually wasn't mid because mid would mean it would be in the middle tier. I'm gonna have to put it lower than that, bro. I'm putting in D, okay? D for don't make me listen to this shit ever again. Even the single bleed, bro, is just like basic. I don't know. And I know that sounds ridiculous because look, Taylor Swift, Jonas Brothers, Maroon 5. Obviously, I can enjoy some basic music. But what you can't do is you can't pretend not to be basic and then make basic music. You know, at least they're embracing it. That's what the Kid Leroy did on this album and I was not a fan. So yeah, this is the week one tier list. Looks pretty solid. I, I like that we're getting some discrepancies between all of them. All the tiers are filled out. This is good. I have no idea what albums I wanna listen to for week two, but I will update you guys at this cut right here. I'll be honest, after the first week, I was feeling pretty confident because I usually have more than enough time to crank out an album during a workout. So theoretically, as long as I go to the gym every day, this challenge should be a breeze. The problem with that is you know how hard it is to go to the gym every day? On one hand, it does become a more efficient use of my time, so that should motivate me more. But on the other hand, that does not account for my raging case of lazy bum that sits around all day eating Cheez-Its. So not exactly a foolproof plan. And that definitely started to become more apparent during the second week. Um, so yeah, we're two weeks in, and I am five albums behind. <laughs> this week has been very, I guess we'll just say busy. Had I known how hectic this week would be, I probably would not have started this challenge this month. I probably would have saved it for August. I'm planning on going to the gym later tonight. Maybe I'll try to crank out two albums. You know, the title of the challenge is 30 albums in 30 days. It doesn't say one album per day for 30 days, right? So as long as I make it to June 30th, I mean July 30th, as long as I make it to July 30th, having listened to 30 albums i think i'm fine i don't really know why i'm acting like there's these rules that i'm breaking when it's my video i could really do whatever i want i just don't want you guys to feel gypped like you know you click on the title of the video i don't want it to be like clickbait all right week two update i ended up just picking shorter projects so that i could crank them out faster because on the days that i would skip the gym and not be able to listen to any music i could then make up for by listening to two albums in one workout which was kind of a bummer because there were some albums that i was looking forward to listening to but they're just over an hour long i just don't have that time you know, I'm, I'm on crunch time right now because I really didn't want my album debt to carry over into the next week because then it just becomes a lot more stressful and whatever. But the important thing is we're here. Let's get into tier list time, baby. Heaven or Hell by Don Tolliver. A fun album, a good one, kind of a quick one. I'm honestly surprised how popular it was. Not that it's like bad, but it didn't feel that substantial to me, you know? Like take out After Party, take out No Idea. Overall though, I think his sound is a great sound. Thematically, structurally, just in general, wasn't really mind blowing. I'm gonna have to go see, bro. I feel like that'll make some people angry, but it's just not anything insane. Anti by Rihanna. Definitely a step above heaven or hell. My expectations were on the fucking roof. Okay, they were in, in space. Because everyone was saying, you gotta listen to Anti, bro. It's a classic. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> There's some really fun moments and some moments where I'm like, damn, this production's insane. I love the opening track too with SZA. Fire. But a lot of it is just like lifeless. You know, I don't know if you guys would agree with that, but songs like Woo and Work, I'm like, what are we doing here, fam? Like, what's good, fam? At least she was trying new things in each song, and it felt like there was a lot of variety there. And Rihanna's also just a great performer, great presence on all these songs. Ah, uh, it's tough. I low-key like it more than Camp. I'm sorry. Jaguar 2. Oh my goodness, this is a great album. When you think about modern R&B, a lot of it is like super alternative, super just like out there. You know, you look at like The Weeknd or even SZA sometimes. Really just not confining yourself to like the R&B sound. This album I feel like is modern R&B, but it's not straying away from R&B too much to make it pop friendly, make it feel different. It feels very classic, it feels authentic, but it also feels modern. It doesn't feel too nostalgic or too old school or too retro. Because the internet has also grown on me a lot, I'm gonna put it below because the internet. Z by SZA. Hmm, now we're getting into like, some difficult territory. Another great project, so different from what I'm used to with SZA. I don't feel like written-wise, these songs are as good as the ones on Control. 
or even SOS, to be honest. I'll put you at the, the top of B. Oh shit. Give or Take by Giveon, another modern R&B staple. I thought this album was very fun. Giveon is a fantastic vocalist. Party wants to do this. Like that, you know what I'm saying? Nothing Happens by Wallows. For the sole purpose of vibes, it was pretty good. This B tier is filling up pretty fast. I hope we get some better ones. Oh wait, we already are because stick season, that's an S tier, bro. Oh my God. Fantastic writing, fantastic arrangements of the instruments, fantastic freaking banjos and ukuleles and guitars and freaking homesick is a banger. Okay, stick season is a banger. I'm just gonna keep going with the punches. I'm kind of confused. But, you know, we're confused together, so that's okay. Going into week three, I was definitely feeling a lot more confident. You know how people say that the second year of marriage is the hardest? Well, the second week of listening to 30 albums in 30 days is also the hardest. I went into this project with so much ambition. I was like, let's do the Childish Gambino albums, the Tyler the Creator discography, Kendrick Lamar, Radiohead, Morgan Wallen. But by the time I finished the Childish Gambino albums, taking on a whole new discography literally the next day sounded like actual torture. And while I was in that weird limbo state, not really sure, Sure which direction to go in. I ended up picking some really random records like Malibu, The Kid Leroy, Heaven or Hell. Not that those albums were bad, it's just so early in the challenge you'd expect me to choose some heavier hitters, especially if I wanted the shorts to do well. But this week I was in a much more comfortable and consistent rhythm, mainly because I kind of threw out the idea of taking on entire discographies. Rather than having my whole week planned out so I can knock out all six Tyler the Creator albums, most of the time I would walk into the gym not even sure which album I was going to listen to that day. I'd just play a few songs to get warmed up up, see what genre I was feeling, and whichever album came to mind is what I chose. On leg days, I usually preferred something a little more lyrical, like hip hoppy, so I could distract from the fact that I wanted to die. On chest days, I go for something like pop punky, you know, so I could have the energy to hit my maxes. And finding that simpler consistency made the process so much easier. Even editing the shorts became a lot less time consuming because I started batch filming. And overall, yeah, at this point, I was feeling pretty optimistic about the rest of the challenge. We have made it to the week three recap. I have made it this far into this challenge only by the grace of God. Starting off with day 15, we listened to Clancy, which is the new 21 Pilots album. It was okay. I think I'm gonna put it at the top of C. Who Cares by Rex Orange County. Freudian. Brand New Eyes by Paramore. Some fucking bangers on this one right here, all right? The only exception, ha, 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 turn it off, ho, ho, ho. ignorance, bro, crazy charm. Currents by Tame Impala. Dark Side of the Moon. And this is our tier list three weeks in. So many of these 30 day challenge videos on YouTube have a bunch of up and downs that conveniently make it feel like by the end of the video, they pushed with everything they had to finish it. But that didn't really happen for me. I will say at this point, I was getting pretty fed up with editing, but even that frustration wouldn't add up to anything other than me saying, I don't feel like editing to my friends or family and they go, stop being a lazy bum. And then I just get back to work. So sorry if this process is not as eventful, but Mm, I'm just being honest. My lovely, lovely losers, we've arrived to the last day, day 30. I can't, I can't even believe that we made it this far. The challenge is over. Oh my God, it's so sad. Let's get into the final selection of albums that we will be inputting to the tier list. So this is the tier list that we're left with from last week. I don't know what we're gonna do if we get a lot of B tiers um, because we're running out of space, but we'll figure it out as we go. What's Going On by Marvin Gaye, absolute banger of an album. Obviously not the type of album that would come out today, but I think it's a staple. 12 Carat Toothache, oh boy, ugh. I don't mind Post Malone as like a person that walks this planet. His existence does not bother me by any means, but this is definitely a fucking D tier. Riot by Paramore, banger if you ask me. Let's stick with that for now. Hozier, solid album. My only complaints were that the second half definitely felt a little bit weaker and it just didn't commit to the aesthetic as much as I think I would have liked. But there's some really good songs. I love the small angel coding, whatever. A little above anti. Bando Stone in the New World. I think I'll put you there above Riot. Under Pressure by Logic. I low-key like it more than Freudian. Is that weird? I don't know. Incredible true story. Did not like this one as much as the Logic one. I mean, the other Logic one. For now, we're putting it there. Day 29, Chaperone. I might get some hate for this, bro. That's an S tier. This album is fantastic, dude. Low-key feels disrespectful to put it over what's going on. Low-key think I'll do it, bro. And the last... Abbey Road, solid album, not what I expected from the Beatles at all. Long form video on this project coming soon. So now that this challenge is over, do I feel like I had any big takeaways? 
a few, I guess. First, I definitely say that my music taste has become a little more refined. I just feel like after listening to all these albums, I've become at least a little bit better at determining what I like and don't like in certain songs. Cause this past month, I've come across plenty of songs that I could argue are good songs, but just aren't really my cup of joe. And that's the other thing, like most of the albums I listened to weren't that bad. I may have given a few low scores, but it's not like any of them were unlistenable. There's no genre sad boys here. So that definitely also made the challenge a lot easier. Can you imagine if I did like 30 fantastic Tano not goods in 30 days. Oh my god. God. I also think that having to review so many albums, even if it wasn't that in-depth, helped exercise my music commentary muscle. It's no secret that a lot of the videos on my channel aren't exactly that serious. And while I think that's fine, because I'm just not a serious guy, I definitely always want to get better at analyzing my deeper thoughts for the music that we cover here. You know, making sure there's at least some value to the content I'm pumping out. So regarding this whole process as practice as well, definitely helped. Felt like I was getting my reps in a little bit, you know? Like I said earlier, my biggest struggle with this whole process was just dealing with with the ambition that I started off with and trying to juggle that without driving myself crazy. So yeah, that may have resulted in me not choosing the best or most popular albums for this challenge. And there are plenty of requests that I got in the comments that I just never got around to. But what I've come to realize with music is that you just can't fake it. As much as I kind of look back on this challenge and wish that I stepped a little further out of my comfort zone, I do think it's better to do it gradually, you know? And at the end of the day, you're gonna like what you like. And I knew that if I didn't have at least some personal interest in the album I was covering that day, it was gonna show in some way, shape or form. And once I kind of realized that, you know, just went with the flow of whatever I felt like listening to rather than plotting things out and trying to be strategic and smart with it, it was honestly pretty easy. So yeah, I mean, other than that, there's no real physical results. This isn't like a 30 day fitness challenge where I would have a six pack to show you. I wish. But anyways, it was fun. I've wanted to make a series like this for shorts for a while. So I'm glad that I was able to do it over the summer when I could dedicate a lot of my time to it. And yeah, you know, I set out to broaden my music palette. I definitely say I did that a little bit. Maybe not as much as I was anticipating, but I mean, I listened to a 21 Pilots album. I, I really never thought I would ever do that in my entire life. So that's growth, I guess. Anyways, I hope you liked the video. Comment down below if you think any of the album placements in the tier list were wrong. And I'll see you guys hopefully sometime later this week or next week.